Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Arise, a simple story definitive edition on the Nintendo Switch. Now this one, it's been out elsewhere for a little while now and it was seriously well respected at launch. So let's take a look and see if it's going to be worth your cash with this Nintendo Switch build. So with that luck, hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. Arise a simple story then puts a big focus on its story, it's for sure the driving force behind the experience, but its delivery, it's actually completely wordless. It uses instead images and stone statues that you find around its world to push that narrative forward, and I'd describe it as emotionally intense. It's just an incredibly well done tale that finds a man on a journey following the loss of the love of his life. I won't be saying any more here, this is one best experienced mostly blind, so that is all I'm going to be giving you. Thought it was really well done though and I was really impressed. Gameplay then and we essentially get a puzzle platformer here with the added spin, the ability to both rewind, fast forward and slow down at time. In execution though it's exceptionally crafted and I can see why it received such critical acclaim at launch. For those that may be unaware as well, this was originally published by Techland, they decided not to move forward it seems and now untold tales they stepped in for the push to the switch. Controls wise then you move with the left stick but there's no camera control in relation to rotation, only the option to zoom in and out. Instead of the right stick you'll be pushing that left and right to manipulate time both for rewind and fast forward. For this switch build as well you can also opt for motion controls that will also control the rewind and fast forward flow of time which is for sure a unique addition. Alongside this then you'll be holding the right trigger to near freeze time and the left trigger allows you to grab onto objects mostly for climbing. Y is an action button that works with a few of the tools, these tend to get introduced later in the game. Starting off the game though you'll be in a frozen location, a glowing ring will appear next to you. This is your hub world, this is your I guess doorway to that next level. You will always return here to navigate to that next step. The time function as well, they could have kept it the same throughout but instead with each and every level they change it up thanks to a variety of locations. These locations often reflect our character's history or emotional states. Think here for levels though, lava that you must control, a light source that you need to track with time control, a cavern that is literally crumbling around you and that list goes on. A particular highlight, a bridge collapses above you, slow down time, jump on the falling platform and then rewind to reach that next location. In action it seems so simple at least in implementation but it's actually quite genius in its design because it focuses on what the world around you can be doing and then asking you the player how can you leverage that. It will be taking you everywhere though from the realistic to the more surreal to even what I'd call alien and for its 3 hour runtime I was absolutely locked in. Problems then on the switch for gameplay I had very few issues honestly, the gameplay really is kind of this perfect partner to the story it's weaving but I will say the occasional frame rate fluctuation it is definitely here and present. With the ability to slow, stop, fast forward though I'd never describe the frame rate as too impactful on the experience and when you do fast forward in certain locations you may notice almost a stutter to the animations around you like snow appearing. It almost looks like frame rate but that's actually by design I checked with videos from other platforms. For gameplay it's one of those experiences where the less you know the better like the story that same comment goes for the gameplay. Half the fun is in the surprise but I was impressed with its constant evolution of its core time manipulation mechanics to push the game forward. Being the definitive edition then it includes photo mode exclusive to the Switch build as well as a digital art book and soundtrack. You will be accessing these on the main menu, they'll actually show a QR code on screen, scan that and you'll get access to download it. Graphically then that's where the Switch build takes the biggest hit, now I wouldn't describe it as an ugly game, far from it, 
but there's some areas where the replacement designs they can be a little bit jarring like the texture work or the representation of let's say grass it can just be a little bit I guess strange. Shadows also take a decent hit as well and in a few levels you can see maybe a little more than perhaps the developer ever intended. Some stages it's supposed to be like dark caves but obviously with the resolution drop they had to brighten things up a bit. There's also then a noticeable pixelation around our lead and especially in cutscenes. The locations still though I think they are impressive, there's a nice variety, there's always something moving, something happening around you and that is impressive given you know so much of this world is interactable and that might not immediately be apparent to you but obviously when things are falling around you you quickly start to realize I can be using these things as platforms maybe that's my next step I need to take. Finally for graphics the color palette goes all over the place as well from the dark to vibrant and that is refreshing. I played on the OLED and that was my favorite way to play at times. The characters they can be a little on the small side but it sharpens up the visuals and those colors they absolutely pop. Audio finally and it is stunning, the entire experience is supported by what I'd call a near perfect orchestral score, seeing the option to download it on the main menu that absolutely made my day and this soundtrack deserves a physical release. It's music that doesn't just support the story and the action on screen but rather elevates it and that's always the biggest compliment I can give. Sound effects then absolutely mirror the emotional beats of the story while adding intrigue, tension and emotion to the gameplay. They for sure reflect not only what's around you but perhaps flashbacks, different scenes from this character's life. It's high quality work and it deserves recognition. So the final verdict in Arise A Simple Story was a genuine surprise. Honestly I'd never heard of it but I'm glad I covered it. Won't be for everyone, but it balances so many elements, you know, a emotionally stirring storyline that's wordless, letting you take away your own meaning behind the different scenes. Then it's combined with puzzle platforming with a time control spin. That time control though, not a gimmick, it's absolutely something that constantly evolves. The issues for the Switch, some frame rate fluctuations at points in that downgrade, but I do think if this is your only way to play or you want handheld, you should absolutely check it out. I am a sucker for a good puzzle platformer and it's even better when they can bring something that impacts the audience with its story. A great 8 out of 10 from me today, I wish we could get the full visual experience but even with that downgrade, this is a game I won't be forgetting anytime soon. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.